And hello everyone, this is Nolan Rich, and this is Rich Sports Talk, and what can I say? When people ask me to describe being a New York Mets fan, it's a roller coaster of emotions, and I don't think you can point to a weekend in a long time, like this weekend for Met fans, about what it's like to be a New York Met fan. The highs are great. But there's also a lot of crazy lows, and this was just such a weird start to the second half of the season, and should the Mets be concerned? I'll get into that in a little bit, but let's let's just look at this series, and good news for the Mets is this comeback on Sunday against the Pirates coming back from 6 nothing down after the disastrous first inning which included a swinging bunt that scored three runs. And if you haven't seen it, you you probably have, but it's easy to just look up on social media. And Taiwan Walker, who's been great the first half of the season for the Mets, couldn't get out of the first inning. And one of the plays that killed the Mets, and everyone was just like, oh my God, that is so Mets. Like, that is a Mets play. And that was a swinging butt where Taiwan Walker was trying to touch the ball foul on the third base line, slapped his glove to knock the ball foul, but the ball was on the line and ruled fair. Now, the best part of this whole sequence is the umpire rules it fair, and instead of Taiwan Walker doing the logical thing and trying to retrieve the baseball, he decides to argue with the umpire. Meanwhile, three other Mets are just standing there while the Pirates are just running around the bases. And you could just see the tweets and social media just erupting like, this is panic time, this is a low point for the Mets, like this is the collapse, this is the end. And I have to give this Met team credit because this weekend is still a blow. But they really softened it. And this is one thing you have to like about this team is... They come back, they fight. The bullpen was solid in what has been their MO this year, which was amazing after the Saturday night implosion. But you saw this Met team continue to fight, get timely hits, and somehow scrape out a win. And do you feel good after this weekend? No. The Pirates coming in this weekend had 34 wins. The Mets, Met fans were disappointed when they split the series at City Field and felt, okay, that last game of the All-Star game, the Sunday where Diaz blew the save in the ninth, okay, that was a re- one bad game, but we, you know, we're still in first place. But then you got to this series and it's like, well, we're still in first place, but man, this was a low point because it wasn't just on the field where on Friday where the Mets score only one run. Or Saturday, they put up a sixth spot. They have an incredible lead. I saw a stat that teams leading in the eighth inning by six runs were 314 consecutive wins. Then the Mets blew that, including a grand slam in the ninth inning. So I think the big question is, should Met fans be panicking? I wouldn't go to panicking, but I would be very worried And if I'm the Mets front office, this is a worrying trend because for the last couple of weeks, the Mets had a bit of a built-in excuse, which was, well, it's the injuries. They're they're playing all the B players. They're they're playing all the backups. And this weekend certainly didn't help with the news that DeGrom's going on the 10-day IL. And the same thing with Francisco Lindor with the oblique. Not sure how long he'll be out. I think DeGrom was just out of caution, although... He said that he felt the forearm tightness before the break, with hoping it would get better. It hasn't. And he, and this was the great thing. He finally admitted uh, that he has gotten the injuries from swinging the bat, to which Met fans are probably going to look at the rest of the season and say, Jacob, we know you're hanging 400, but don't swing the bat. And I think Met fans are now hoping for the universal DH rule for next year so DeGrom stays healthier because he's not swinging a bat. But anyways... You came in losing two of your biggest stars, but this is the biggest problem for the me as a Met fan coming out of this weekend, which was Stroman didn't pitch great. 
He pitched well enough. Tyler McGill looks really good early in his career. And look, Tyler Walker has been brilliant this year. For some of these pitchers, you're just going to have a bad start. And this was just one of those bad starts. But I would be concerned about the consistency of the back end of this bullpen. But the biggest concern to me is this lineup. Because as great as it is to see J.D. Davis at two home runs on Saturday and have that bat back, still seeing Conforto hang the game-winning home run, that's great. Outside of one player really in this lineup, who has really met or exceeded expectations in your view? I say the one player that has exceeded expectations has been Brandon Nimmo. He's hitting over 300. He's been good defensively. And coming right back off the IL has been an impact player. He's been impacting on the field, getting on base. He's been great. He's been a lot better than I think you would imagine. But if I went around the rest of this team, you would be saying, yeah, they're not where I'd expect them to be. James McCann's probably the closest to what I kind of expected, but he's still been a bit of a disappointment. Alonzo's been a disappointment. And look, I get it. It was fantastic seeing him hitting the home run derby. But I think some Met fans like me had this crossed their mind. Can he do that for the Mets in games? Like, he's not facing world beers for the Pirates this weekend, and no balls left the ballpark off his bat. But anyways, I mean, even Dominic Smith, he's gotten better lately. But what you expected from Dominic Smith, he hasn't produced. Conforto, you're hoping, is breaking out of the slump. But he hasn't been what you wanted, Jeff McNeil. I mean, it this lineup has fell short of expectations. The big question is, do you address third base? I mean, could you go after Chris Bryant? Sure. But to me, the biggest thing is you got to get the guys that are on the team producing. How you do that, I don't know. But to me, that's the biggest concern. Look, the bullpen is also a concern. And it, to me, the bullpen has been great this year. And you saw it again on Sunday. That's the reason they won that game. And why the reason they've been able to get away with the starting pitching. But once again, Edwin Diaz, you are concerned about because this is a guy who was great. And now all of a sudden, this last week, you're seeing old Edwin Diaz laying the ball fly out of the ballpark. And even Seth Lugo. Lugo was supposed to be this hyper-effective reliever. And if you saw Diaz really struggle, you can make the case Lugo could be the closer. And while he's been okay, he hasn't been the same player you were expecting of him. A lot of these Met players have been below the expectations where I think we felt they would be. I mean, Jerry's Familia, to me, has been a better reliever than I imagined. Like, if you were to tell me that Familia was going to be pitching the way he was pitching compared to where Lugo's pitching, I would have said, you're crazy. I would say Lugo's been so consistent in his career. But to me, the biggest need is still starting pitching. And... I think that we kind of glaze over this because we say, well, Cookie Carrasco's coming back. Noah Syndergaard, I I think for now you just push him off for this year because he hasn't even started throwing yet. If any way he's going to impact this team is maybe out of the bullpen. That's the only re- realistic way I could see him making some impact, but that wouldn't be until at least September. So I look at the starting rotation. Look, strowman has been better than you thought, but he's solid. I mean, you've gotten more than you could have imagined out of Taiwan Walker. McGill has pitched really well and I think has earned a spot in this rotation. But now you're getting to these bullpen games, which I hate and was just dreading last Sunday when they played Pittsburgh. I think this team needs to look for a starting pitcher. And maybe not even get an ace, but just get a guy to get innings because now with the DeGrom injury I think you could get away saying okay we're giving a little extra rest we're being a little cautious but now with DeGrom we're we're seeing a pattern this year which is little nag little nag little nag and it's just escalated and now he's on the injured list and to me does that mean you have to go out and get a number one ace no but if you could get a great starting pitcher or if you could find even a good starting pitcher to me that is more valuable to this team because outside of really third base there's no spot on this team where you're drastically going to improve the lineup I know they've talked about second base a little bit maybe moving McNeil to third but realistically maybe outside those two positions but really 
realistically third base, you're not going to really improve this lineup. You're just going to need the guys that are here to play better, which I know is easier said than done. But to me, if you're a Met man, you get a little relief out of this weekend. Because I guarantee you, if they had just laid down after giving up that six spot and gotten swept, then you have full permission to panic. I don't think we're quite there yet, but there are a lot of warning signs and they're not good. But one thing you saw about this team on Sunday is they continue to fight, they continue to be in games, and they continue to fight from behind. There's a lot of teams in that situation that would just say, no, you know what? Let's just move on to the next series. A lot of teams do that. They check out. They've already made the decision. All right, this game's over with. This series is over with. We got to just start preparing for the next one. They didn't do that. And the Mets, to their credit, earned a hard-fought victory. It wasn't pretty, but the bullpen redeemed themselves from the night before. The offense... Got it going again, but you'd like to see more consistency out of some of these big stars. But if there's anything to take out of this weekend, and the Mets front offense needs to know this, is this team is a good team. But if you're expecting this team the way it's currently built to win in the postseason, they're going to need help because there's still too many questions with the bullpen. Too many questions with the lineup and too many questions now with the starting rotation. And what you've got out of the starting rotation has been brilliant. And now with the DeGrom injury, I would be in the market for a starting pitcher. Now, if you can not give up the entire farm, because the Mets now have a decent farm system, I would be trying to look for a good number two or number three starter, especially on a team that will be out. But a lot of Met fans are asking the question, should I be worried? I wouldn't be worried. I wouldn't be panicking just yet. But if you're this Met team, you cannot sit back after these last seven games against the Pirates, who, may I remind you, are a team that is in last place. And you lost four of seven. But more brutally, outside of a great heroic effort, you probably... Should have won more because you had two games in the ninth in two huge leads, a five-run lead and a six-run lead in games that you blew. So that has to be very concerning. And I'm hoping that Steve Cohen in this front office are looking at the series and saying, we have a good starting point, but we can't just sit by at the deadline. We need to do something because there are places to improve this ball club. The lineup will be a little tricky, but especially pitching. If you can get a good late-inning reliever, that will be instrumental. But to me, more importantly, is getting a starter. Because with DeGrom's injury, Stroman and Walker have been great this season. But you need another quality arm in this rotation. And I know you could make the case, well, they're getting Carrasco back. That's great. And I love Carrasco. I think he's a great pitcher. But... He hasn't pitched a single game this year. And if you're relying on him to come back and without question be a top three guy, you're hoping he's that, but you don't know. And that is the key thing. And even with the DeGrom history, I would just want to get a starter now because really this year, with coming back after the shortened season, you're just trying to get through the season. You're trying to keep your guys healthy. And if you're the Mets and DeGrom, DeGrom is their best player. And you know you're going to need him in the postseason. You, you'll you sacrifice a couple starts in the regular season. But in order to do that, you're going to need more pitching depth. Because you can't rely right now on some of the young guys in your system. And I know some Met fans have it that Rocker, their first round pick, could somehow be up. He's not going to be on this team. The only way I could maybe see Rocker is the 40-man call-ups and they put him in the bullpen and see if he can get outs and maybe like David Price. I mean, we forget with David Price, when he first came up, it was out of the bullpen. And they basically told him, throw your great slider. And that's what they might tell Rocker. Hey, Rocker, throw just sliders and 99 and that's it. 
But if you're expecting Rocker to be in this rotation at some point this year, they're not going to do that. That's not the Mets' MO. They don't rush prospects. They're very slow. And their track record has worked pretty well. You look at a lot of their guys, when they do come up, they don't look overwhelmed by the moment. Like McGill, he has come up. He's made pitches. He's looked calm. He's looked mature. They don't look overwhelmed by the moment. I think that's because they've gotten that additional seasoning. So for Met fans, it was a rough weekend. I mean, our blood pressure definitely went up. We probably will have some migraines from this weekend. The good news is the Mets salvaged the game. Does it alleviate all the problems and all the terrible feelings from this past weekend? No. But it does show that there is a positive to this team, and that is that they don't quit and that they're able to find ways to win games that they shouldn't. The question is, can they now fix the problem, which has been over the last two weeks, losing the games they shouldn't? Thank you for joining us on this episode of Rich Sports Talk. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our latest New York Mets content. Until next time, I'm Nolan Rich. We'll see you later.